Hi there and welcome to Blender Tutorials. My name's Hayden Falzon and I'm going to be teaching you the three steps to master baking in Blender. The steps in order are Step 1. Use cycles. Step 2. Add a non-connected image texture node to your shader. And Step 3. Set up the bake settings for the particular pass or output that you're after. We're going to be using this procedural mushroom shader that I created for a course for BlenderTutorials.org, which is my website that I have created specifically for beginners and intermediaries to learn Blender in an efficient and positive way. If you're someone that's tried to learn Blender via YouTube and just haven't had any luck with it, I highly suggest heading over to BlenderTutorials.org. We have a unique level-based approach to learning Blender that ensures that you're at an appropriate level before you actually learn the content. As you progress, you'll earn Blender tokens and you can use these tokens to buy little knickknacks such as materials, VDB files, as well as even eventually animation data at some point as well, which is a pack that I'm currently working on. I have designed this service as something that I would have really enjoyed when I was learning Blender. So if this is something that sounds interesting to you, please check it out at blendertutorials.org. All right, but enough about that. Let's get back to this tutorial. Okay, so the first step to baking in Blender is to turn off Eevee and turn on Cycles if you aren't using Cycles already. So to do that, we want to navigate to our render properties inside our properties area over here. And then at the top here, we're going to change our render engine from the Eevee render engine to the Cycles render engine. Now we will see that it changes the viewport just a little bit. The lighting is going to be a little bit more intense and realistic because we're getting a little bit more bounce light now because Cycles is what's called an unbiased render engine. It calculates lighting far more accurately. Now that we've done that, we should have a new option down here in our render properties called Bake. And this is where we input the settings for our bake. Now let's set this bake up. We want to bake out a few passes from this asset here. We want to bake out a diffuse. We want to bake out a bump or normal. And we also want to bake out a roughness as well. Just to kind of give an example. So let's select the material here. And let's set this material up to use baking. The second step to baking is to create an empty image texture node. So I'm going to use shift a search image texture and I'll just drop that in here. Now this is a very important step. Do not, I repeat, do not attach this image texture to anything. Just leave it floating in space. Now that we've done that, we're going to go to new and we're going to name a new image that we're going to bake to. And for this one, I'm going to call it diffuse. And we can set the width and the height for this image here. So I might want to go 2K for this particular example, just so it's not too high. So I'm just timesing that value by two to make it a little easier on myself. Okay, now that I've done that, I can press OK. And I've got diffuse in here. So we want to bake the color information from the mushrooms into this diffuse here. Another thing that I like to do if you're in the shading workspace is to come over to your image viewer area and click on here and load up the image that you're going to be baking to. What this allows you to do is it allows you to see the result very, very quickly after you've done the bake. So you can tell if there's any problems that you need to address. Okay. So assuming that your model is UV unwrapped, we're now ready to move on to step three. Step three involves setting up our shader as well as the bake settings in order to bake the specified map out to our texture that we've made down here. So in this case, we're going to be pulling out the diffuse information and applying it to this texture here. So let's first start with going to our bake settings and we're going to change our bake type. So by default, it's going to be set to combined. What this means is it's going to be including lighting information, direct, indirect, and pretty much all of the channels as well. 
this would be essentially like rendering out as per normal really it's just baking that information down to a texture so this would be really good if you were making a low poly game and you wanted to have no lights in the scene so you wanted to bake all the lighting information before putting that asset into your game a really good use case for this is when developing for mobile 3D games, especially Android, because lights add a lot of overhead. But we don't want that. We want just a diffuse. So we're going to change the bake type from combined and we're going to find diffuse. Now, after that, we're going to set the influence and we're going to turn off direct and indirect. And we just want the color. Perfect. Okay, so now that that's all done, we're pretty much finished in here. We don't really have to play with anything else. If we were doing a selected to active, which is a, another method, we would have to play with a cage, but we're not going to be touching this in this lesson. Okay. So now let's set up our shader here so that it's nice and easy to bake. Something that I like to do is I like to create a diffuse BSDF node and then I will like to put that BSDF into the surface. Now, I know this might seem sort of counterintuitive, but I think by just having this diffuse BSDF node here for our baking path, it can really help just make life a little easier at times. Because instead of wrangling nodes and trying to work out which is going where, we're just going to put the channel that we want directly into here. And that's going to be our output. And to make sure that we know it's our output, we can actually rename it by going to our sidebar by pressing N and changing the label to bake. So this is going to be my color diffuse first because that's what I'm baking. So I'm going to take my color information and put it to the color here. And we should see a somewhat okay result. Remember, this is contributing this is being lit as well because it is a diffuse. But once we bake this, because we've told the influence to only contribute the color, that lighting should not show up in our diffuse over here. And now we're pretty much done. All three steps done. Let's hit bake. Because we're using cycles, this isn't going to be as fast as an EV render. And it may take a little time depending on a few things such as your cycles settings, which can be found up here, the sampling, the device that you're currently rendering on. So currently I'm rendering on a 3060 Ti. So if you're on a Mac, you'll be using CPU rendering, which will take a little longer. Okay, and then through the power of editing, we're gonna skip ahead a little bit. Okay, and we've finished our bake and over here in our image viewer, we can see the result of our bake and we can see that there's no lighting whatsoever and our procedural texture has been successfully extracted from our model here. So this is perfect. What we can actually now do is I can actually replace the diffuse information that is currently being procedurally generated here uh, with this simple node if I really wanted to. And let's just plug that back in we should see there's very little difference now. Now, I do want to point out that there will be some differences, especially once we extract the bump and the roughness, because just because of how we're generating the environment noise, if we wanted to extract all the detail, we'd have to go really, really high with our resolution for our image. We're limited by resolution with textures. We're not limited by resolution with procedural textures. So that is something you want to keep in mind, especially with smaller details like I have on the stems of these mushrooms here. Okay, so let's do another one now. Let's do those three steps again. Let's start off with the first step. So we've turned on cycles. I mean, we don't have to do that again. Let's go to step two which is we're going to add a new image texture node. So we're going to go shift A, add image texture. And this time we're going to go new. And let's call this one roughness. We want it at 2K as well. I'll press OK. Now I'm going to load roughness up into here. 
This is just so that I can make sure that, that it's set. Now, when you have multiple image textures within your shader, you want to make sure that the one that you're going to be rendering to is selected and highlighted like so. Now what we can do is we can take the roughness output, which is this one here, and put it into our bake, making sure that our bake is also connected to the material output. So let's grab our result that's going into the roughness, put it into the color. Now, the reason why I do it this way is because I don't actually have to take change my bake type at all. I could change it to roughness, for example, but but this is much more simple and works perfectly fine for applications such as this. Now we're just going to make sure that we've got our image texture node selected that we want to bake to, and we're going to press bake. And again, we're going to wait around a little bit for it to bake out this information. So I'll see you in just a moment. Okay, and there it has done. So we can see that our roughness value has saved to our roughness texture here, which is fantastic. And once again, we can now swap these out. Now, one thing to note here, as you're doing this, you wanna make sure you come up here to the sandwich menu, come down to image, and then either save your image or pack the image. You'll see that there's a little asterisk next to image, and that means that it's currently not saved. So if you were to exit Blender and ignore any of the prompts, because usually Blender does a good job at warning you now if you're about to exit without saving, but let's say for whatever reason it doesn't, then you'll lose that and you'll have to do it all over again. So you want to make sure you do this step. So in this example, I'm just going to pack it. So what packing means is that it saves it to the blend file rather than to a exterior location on my file somewhere. So let's do the same for roughness as well. Okay, so now we're going to do the normal or bump. Now, in this example, I'm going to do the normal map. If you want to do the bump, and you might want to do the bump for a number of different reasons, uh, one of them being a bump is held in one value channel, whereas a normal is held in three value channels. So you can save performance and, and data if you use a bump. So this is particularly important for games. Again, let's do a normal this time as an example. So I've got the normal data going up into the normal input of my bake. And now I can change my bake type in the bake settings down here to normal. I'm going to make sure that I'm going to now load in an image texture node. I'm going to press new. I'm going to call this normal. I'm going to keep all the settings the same. Okay. Make sure that I have it selected because the target is image textures. And now I'm just simply going to bake. And while we do that, let's load up the normal that I just created. So as that's baking, I'm going to skip ahead so that we can see the result. See you in but a second. Okay, and there we go. We have our normal map successfully created. So now let's just go over here, image and pack. Now, before I click this, this is actually another reason we want to make sure that we save or pack it. So we get access to the color space channel or property for our node here. And that will allow us to actually successfully see if this is all worked. So image, pack, and we should see if I have packed it, which I should have. There we go. Color space is now visible. So I can access that. I'm now going to disconnect all of the values here and plug in the principal BSDF back into the material output node. And I'm gonna now plug in just our textures here. So I'm gonna make sure the roughness is non-color and the normal is non-color because they're not. And I'm going to plug the normal into a normal map node, color to color, normal to normal. Okay, and now let's also plug in the roughness into the roughness and we have got our asset with just textures now. So this is just how we go about baking in Blender so that we are able to take this information out now and put it into, let's say, a game engine or perhaps a, 
another 3D rendering software. So maybe Keyshot, something like that. So we can take this out and we can use it outside of Blender's nodes. Really, really powerful stuff. And there we have it. We have successfully learnt the three steps involved in order to do some simple bakes in Blender. Now, there's a lot more involved in baking. For example, there is baking with multi-res, there's baking selected to active, which is when we take two models, one maybe slightly different, and then bake the result of one to the other. So there is more content to learn, and I will be covering this in future lessons. If you're looking forward to content like this or you've enjoyed this video, please hit that like and subscribe button to let me know that you've enjoyed it. Also, feel free to ask me any questions in the comments below. I'll endeavor to answer as many as I can. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, this is Hayden Fausen from BlenderTutorials.org signing off.